Good morning. Happy Easter Monday. I hope you all had a great holiday, whether you were celebrating Easter or Passover. I spent the day here at my house with, uh, with my girls, Emily and Andrea, and her boyfriend, John. And Peter, the girl's dad, was here too. And I made breakfast for everybody. Peter brought desserts and we just had lots of fun talking and sharing and we um, watched the last two Harry Potter movies. We're a Harry Potter family. <laughs> Not crazy, but we enjoy the movies and such. So we did that and then uh, everybody left probably around 536, but it was a good day. So thank you all for being here. I would appreciate it um, if you have the share that you click that. Welcome Jackie, Amy, Susan, Cindy, Becky. Okay, I hope you all brought um, some supplies to the table with you. Um, if not, uh, no worries, you can always do it afterwards, but I thought it would be fun to try something new. So I decided to implement um, make it with Mary on Mondays. So I will be doing this through the remainder of April and through May as well. And um, we'll see how it goes. And, um, you know, always looking for new ways to share stamping with all of you. So um, I decided, um, and I have not pre-planned, I mean, I, I know what in my head, the fun fold card I'm going to show you. Um, but I did not pre-make a sample because today I got out for the first time my um, Ornate Garden Sweet products. And this is part of that early release um, promotion from Stampin' Up. It is gorgeous. It's brand new. It has all these beautiful um, floral prints. It does include one new color which is called bumblebee so i think it's this yellow in here or maybe this it's it's close i don't know i haven't actually seen it yet just in this paper but the new yellow for the in color i suppose is called bumblebee other colors it features are mint macaron old olive terracotta tile and early espresso and of course whisper white so um, and this is specialty paper. On this side is just all beautiful florals. I think the Daisy Punch would go very nicely with this suite as well. And then on the back side, there are just small prints and patterns. And four of them have this beautiful gold metallic accent. Okay, isn't that pretty? Look how lovely that is. And some of these even would lend themselves um, to coloring with your Stampin' Blends or perhaps even your sponge daubers and ink pads. So I'll be focusing on this today, but I did want to show at least show you the products that are in it. Now this is one of those super sweets that comes with two bundles, or you can purchase two bundles. I love them both. The Ornate Style um, stamp set, and this one is one of those cling rubber stamps um, it makes beautiful images so awesome and then this photopolymer one which i like because it's all the words and it'll make it easier for me to line everything up straight um, you can go ahead and um it's you know basically a thanks for everything but look at all these awesome um sayings you can add to your thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I'm so grateful. Seriously, thanks. Thanks ever so much. You're amazing. So here's a card. Thanks for all of your help from all of us for all you do. So, so many great um, sentiments for you. And then of course we have coordinating dies. And this one is gorgeous and it's really detailed but it's just um, frames, ornate frames, which actually is probably the name, ornate layers is the name of the dies. 
Um, and also, this is a great time to pull out that tool with the um, Big Shot brush accessory because that will help you um, with that as well as this one which is called Ornate Borders. So in future weeks we will learn to do some fun techniques and projects with these items. Another product in this suite is the Ornate Floral 3D Embossing Folder. Tiny little fl flowers and leaves. You can probably see it better here on the photo. And then it has a couple of embellishments to coordinate as well. The first is the Ornate Garden Ribbon Combo Pack. And it looks like, um, this looks like terracotta tile and old olive. And they are kind of a satiny um, ribbon, about a quarter inch thick. So those will be nice to work with. And then finally, the Gilded Gems, Gilded Gems. Um, and this, if you place an online order with me during the month of April for at least $35 in product, I will send you free a set of Gilded Gems. So just a nice way to um, thank you for supporting my business, but also get a fun new product into your hands. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to pull out my cutter. How many of you have supplies with you and are going to create along with me? So I'm just going to randomly choose three DSPs. And this is hard because I haven't used any of them and I, I really like them all. Um, I'm gonna do this. It's really cloudy and gray and rainy here in Ohio. And I'm going to use this one and I may use the green on the back of this one. Let me see what other backs. But again, it's just totally up to you what you want to use. They're all fun. They're all pretty. Um, actually, I'll go with these three. Okay. And the reason I told you three pieces that are five and a quarter by four inches is I wanted you to have the largest size that you would need, but also to um, for you to be able to pick and choose which ones you would cut down. So let me show you that. Now as far as my base color, I think I would like to use, um, oh, I don't know. I wasn't thinking about the brown, but I kind of like that. Let me see. Or maybe the terracotta tile. You know, I think I'm gonna go with the brown. No, I think I'm gonna go with the terracotta tile. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I'm going to make my card base. And I told you, told you, you would need a card base that measures four and a quarter by 11 inches, which is this. You want to and I'm just going to score both of mine at the same time. You do want to score that at five and a half. I'll make sure I'm in the screen for you. Okay, I'm gonna score that at five and a half inches. And I'm just gonna do the other one because you know me, I always like to make two cards at once, if I can, or at least most of the time I do, or two similar ones. So that's that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna fold this in half and I'm gonna make a nice crease with my bone folder. That's my other bone folder. I don't know where, here it is. Okay, now on one of these sides, I'm going to cut off two and three quarters inches. That would be half of this. And we're getting a big glare there. So I'm going to measure two and three quarters inches. Make sure you can see. And I'm just going to cut that off. You're going to hang on to that because we are going to use that on our card. So here's basic the basic layout of what our card is going to be. It's going to be this fun fold and it'll open like that. Okay. 
So the three places that I've designated to use designer series paper are on this front, on the small front flap, and then on the inside here. Now I also said to bring with you a um, piece that measures, and I have to cut mine, let me see here, yeah, it's gonna be short. So I need to measure this to be, also be two and three quarters by four and a quarter. And I'll show you why we need that. If we're going to be putting designer series paper here, we aren't going to want to be writing on that designer series paper. So after we get this on, we'll want to line up a piece of Whisper White there so that when we open the card, we have a place for writing. And I'll show you a trick to um, show you how to line this up perfectly with that front piece. So now let's go ahead and just simply start um, cutting some designer series paper. I'm kind of thinking this, a small flap here, that in the back, or maybe I wanna switch these out. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, I think I wanna switch these out. So this is going to be the large piece for my inside. So I need this to measure five and a quarter by four inches. Who's crafting along with me? Or are you just watching and going to craft later? Let me know, because if lots of you are crafting along with me, I wanna make sure I pause enough between steps to give you some time. Okay, now don't be shy about answering. Okay, so, so that's for this. Isn't that a pretty print? The back of it is those gold daisies on white. And then here is where I think I'm gonna put my largest pattern. And I need this to be, this measures four and a quarter by two thirds inches. So I am going to cut this piece to be two and a half inches by four inches. Okay, two and a half by four. And later when I post this to my blog, I'll be sure and type up all the, um, I'll be sure and type up all of the dimensions. Sharon, I cut off two thirds, two and three quarter, no, wait a second. I cut off two and two thirds inches. This is the piece you're talking about because that's half of this. So I cut off two and two thirds. And so you can see that'll be a nice border there. I might want the terracotta up here, maybe. It's always fun to flip the paper. Oh, that would look pretty too with that. And then the last piece, oh, that's pretty too. I keep changing my mind. Okay, so on the last piece, we need it to be the same size, two and a half inches by four, because we know this piece that we cut off is the same as our front flap. So this piece also needs to be that. So I'm going to cut two and a half by four. So it looks like we have a couple watchers and a couple card makers. And if you're watching now, I hope certainly that you'll try this when the video ends. Ooh, that's kind of pretty too, isn't it? I keep changing my mind. Well, you know what that means. I might just have to make two cards. <laughs> or we could even do something like this. A little too much yellow though, I think. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to what I started with. And now I'm going to adhere all these pieces to my card base. 
and I'll review the measurements. Oops. It's not cooperating. Let me get a different one. I guess I could have switched to my multi-purpose glue too. So this inside piece of designer series paper, for those that are making your cards right now, is five and a quarter by four inches. I have no idea what the other new colors are going to be, but I can see already that I'm going to like this bumblebee color. I'm going to put this here, I'm trying to decide how I want that. More yellow. I think I'll put it this way. When I'm centering something like this, and I'll show you on the next piece, what I like to do, boy, there's so many good prints in here. I love these patterns. What I like to do is kind of just hold it in place and when I'm putting it down I'm looking at the left the top and the right sides if those two or those three sides look even to me okay I'm basically looking at those two corners the left and the top and the right and the top if that all looks even to me I know when I lay this down the bottom's going to be even so for me, that's always been the trick to um, placing my layers so that they have an even border all the way around. Oh, Julie, secret safe with me. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to place this on the front of my card. I do want it to be centered. And remember, I only want to put adhesive on the left side. And to be sure I get it all the way to the middle as I can, I'm going to put a little bit right along that edge. And now I am going to just place this in the center. I think that looks pretty good. And lay it down. So I have this. Now here's the trick. We want to put this here. And chances are I can do a pretty good job lining it up, but I don't want this to happen. It's close, but it's not good enough. So what I like to do is put, and if you want to stamp anything, I would stamp first. Okay, this is the front. You want to lay your front over the card base so that you have that same size piece on the front they're lined up perfectly. You see that? Okay. There's... So what I do then is I add my adhesive. Whoops, I'm going to have to put that back in place. It shifted a little while I was putting my adhesive on. And then I'm just going to fold that back flap over to catch the adhesive. Okay. See how that turned out so nicely? Everything lining up? Okay. Now, if you're watching, I hope you're to this spot. What I can do now is finish it off with some stamping and embellishing. I'm not going to use the Ornate Florals embossing folder now. I may use the gems and chances are I will use some ribbon. I'm not just sure how yet. Um, and these are my choices for stamps and flowers and things. And what do I want to do here? I also have all those wonderful um, dies. I think I'm going to add, let's see here. I have to remember which colors I'm working with. 
I've got mint macaron, old olive, terracotta tile, and early espresso for my inks pulled out. I don't have that bumblebee because they have not um, put out the end colors for us to purchase yet. And my stamps aren't mounted either, but that's okay. I think I would like to use um, this stamp, kind of a ornate corner design. So let me get this mounted. You probably see on the top of my head there. Hi Pat from Indiana. Welcome Wendy. We have lots of people watching today. I love this. And please don't forget to share this um, group before and after, if you would. I may be using this also, this little flower and leaves. That would be pretty on the inside of my card. Well, any of these would be. The one I really like here is the single flower. And I'm trying to think how I can incorporate that into this card. So I'm going to go ahead, not 100% sure I'm going to use it yet, but I am going to go ahead and mount it because I really want to use it. And then I'm going to I have to look over the top of this, so sorry if you're seeing my head. Okay, and then I want to choose a thanks. Here it is. These are awesome that they're in photopolymer. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to have thanks on the front. I think that will. Oops, I need a little bit bigger one. Or thank you because I'm going to do a white border in there but I don't want it to so I'm going to do this thanks on the outside with some of these stamps and then I also want to do what was someone about kindness here your kindness is so love I like that so let me get a stamp for that as well blocks could use some cleaning. Okay, so okay, I just happen to have this piece sitting there. So I think I can use this. So I need to cut this down. That was two and a half by four. So I'm gonna go I think two and a quarter. No, I think I want to go two by three and a half. Remember, to get even borders, you always want to go down the same amount on um, horizontally and vertically. Okay, so that's what I think I want to do. I like that. Okay, so my plan is maybe a thanks in the middle. Oh, how about this? Oh, that would be pretty. Or I could do this up in the corner. with the thanks. And I still have this little guy, which any of these would be um, cute to stamp on the envelope as well. Um, hmm. Okay, I think I'm just gonna use this little filigree thing here. I will pull out my Stampin' Pierce mat Remember, the one stamp set is red rubber, and the other one is photopolymer. You definitely want to use your Stampin' Pierce mat with the photopolymer. But for me, to make it easy, I like to just pull out my Stampin' Pierce mat for all of those stamps. Go ahead and mount these others on clear blocks. 
and now to choose what color I'm doing everything in. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put this filigree piece in the brown. That would be pretty embossed too, wouldn't it? Gold embossing. Any of these would be pretty in gold embossing and color them in. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in the corner up here. And I'm thinking I can probably put it in the bottom corner and yes, and still have room for my thanks. So that's what I'm going to do. Oh, these are really elegant. I'm trying to get my spacing about the same. Oh, that's pretty good. Alrighty, then I'm going to stamp the thanks in mint macaron. Oh, didn't get quite that quite straight. I'm going to flip it over and try again. Because that is too off to be satisfactory for me. But you know what will they say? Oh, that's much better. So I'll have to restamp my corners. But you know what they say? The best thing about our cardstock is it has two sides, right? <laughs> Oh, I like that. I like that very much. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this on with dimensionals. Where are my dimensionals? Come out, come out, here they are. I'll put one in the center too. I'm happy to be using some bright spring colors with some new patterns, floral patterns today with how gray it is outside. I'm hoping it clears up so I can get a walk in. I have not been good about exercising at all. But using these bright colors and spring patterns always makes me feel a little better. Okay, I like that really well. Um, I did think of a way I want to use the ribbon. And I think I'm actually going to use the, well, no, the green doesn't quite go with the mint macaron. So I'm going to use this one. And I'm just going to do something really simple. Is it just me or does anybody else have trouble opening these, getting that little bit of cellophane off? I'm going to cheat here and pull it up this way. I like that we're not putting tape on our ribbons all the time, but getting off the strip of cellophane does take some patience. But our ribbon is so good, it's definitely worth the wait, <laughs> definitely worth the effort. Okay, I think what I wanted to do, and I probably should have done this before I stuck that on, but I didn't think of it until after I put it on. I'm just cutting a small piece, I folded in half a small piece, and I'm cutting off the ends, and I'm just gonna use a few glue dots. Kinda used one to sort of hold it together. that and then add a couple more and what I'm going to do is just have this ribbon these ribbon ends just kind of dangling out a little bit like that I think I'm going to cut the angles just a little bit sharper, a little more, more angled. Looks a little more um, 
dramatic that way, I guess I would say. When they're angled a little bit more. Okay, I think we could use some gilded gems. Oh, I do want to stamp the inside. So I've got, thanks, your kindness is so loved. And the inside I'm going to also stamp with the mint macaron. And this is where I should have stamped first, right? When I mentioned to you earlier. But since I hadn't decided on the card, ooh, I love that script too. That font, that is pretty. I like that a lot. Okay, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna dress up the outside with some of these gilded gems. Remember when you order with me, place a $35 or greater order online with me this month, you will get a package of the gilded gems free as a thank you. I'm gonna use the smallest ones. And I'm not sure, I think I'll go up here. And maybe right here. And then, I'm not sure if I want it there or off. What do you think? I feel like it should be down. I'm gonna go right here. Okay. Those are pretty, just gold gilded gems. All right, and now on here, I think this could use a little stamping. So I think I'm gonna do this right in, in that corner. I'm gonna stamp it with early espresso. And then I'm going to grab my, let's see. I need terracotta tile and old olive, I would say. Let's see what they, I have here. Where is it? Here it is, terracotta tile and old olive. And I'm just gonna color them slightly. And that larger flower that I said I really liked and wanted to use, I think I'm gonna put that on the envelope. I don't always dress up my envelopes, but boy, when I do, they always look so pretty. I want a, a little bit lighter color in here first. I think I'll go with, hmm, let me, let me try this. That's Grapefruit Grove. And then I'm going to add some Calypso Coral. And then I'm going to add my terracotta tile to the rest. So these aren't the, um, the markers I'm using are the Stampin' Right markers. They are not the Stampin' Blends. But I thought, you know, I can show off some of these different shades in this way. I don't know how well you can see the difference on the film, but, but I can see it here. Okay, so that's my flower in there. And then how about a pretty envelope to go with it? I stamped it in um, early espresso, and again, I'm filling in the leaf with old olive. Let's see if I can go right down the center of that stem. It looks like my fine tip is dried up, so this is a good time to show you another tip. Oh, more people have joined in. Hi, Rosie and Katie, Karen, Beth, Sue Young, Marilyn. I'm so glad you're all here. When you're fine, the fine tip of your Stampin' Write marker is dry like that, but your other 
um, larger tip is good. What I like to do is instead of replacing it right away, I just like to dab it into my ink pad of the same color. And you can pull up just enough ink to fill in the fine details like I am on this stem. Okay, so there's a fun tip for your Tuesday. No, for your Monday. Tuesday's usually my tip day, isn't it? Okay, now this flower, I'm just going to use the grapefruit on the outside, or the inside of the flower, and on the outside, I'm gonna color with the terracotta tile. Now, would you say that this is an easy fun fold card? You start with four and a quarter by 11 inch card base, then you cut off two and three quarter inches, and that's what you use for your flap up front. And it's one of those fun folds where you still can make two cards out of one piece of cardstock. Okay, now who is going to make one of these? If you haven't made one with me this morning, who is going to make one of these? I would love for you all to post, um, I thought you would, um, I would like for you, sorry, I got distracted by the comments. Um, I would like for you all to make one and take a photo of it and post it in the comments so we can all see. I think that would be fun for us all to start out with the same basic layout, but see who comes up with what. And I think we're going to see some fabulous cards. Um, let's see. Pat asked, are those markers fillable? Honestly, Pat, some people say yes. Um, I pretty much do not, <clears throat> I pretty much do not fuss with filling them. Um, usually when you're, I'm using that fine tip, it's such a small area that I'm coloring that I do it just the way I showed you. Okay. The other thing is I've had, since I'm a demonstrator, I've had two sets for a long time. Um, and like with some color changes in that, I've bought... Um, the newest color. So many of them I have um, two of. Um, so it's a matter of preference. I'm sure you can Google it and there are people out there that say yes you can refill them with the reinkers. Um, just something I don't have never messed with myself. But I believe it is doable if that answers your question. Okay, Beth says you like this idea and you will make some. Amy and Sharon and Susan say yes, it's all, they all say it's an easy fun fold to make. Sue, yes, I know that with you and your card making, you always decorate the inside and the envelopes. And honestly, that the times I don't, I feel guilty about it. <laughs> because I think, oh, it just takes a little bit longer, but I guess it's so busy sometimes I just don't don't do it. But Sue, I recognize that as being um, part of your style, I'll say, that you always um, make a beautiful inside and put something beautiful on your card, your uh, envelope as well. I'm looking back to see if I have any more questions. Oh, Mary Lou was on here. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Sharon. Were there any more questions about this? Okay. If you want to stick around, I'll make one more. Do it using the same, I'll use the very same products, same pieces um, of DSP, but I'll just maybe flip some of those around. So here's my base. I'm gonna pull out my little cutter right now. And I'm going to cut off that two thirds inches. Okay. So I got my main pieces here. Let's see, I can cut this. I need to be four inches. And what else do I need from here? 
I need another four inch piece. What I'm doing is just taking the same designer series papers I used and I'm flipping them over for the second card. And I just saw that piece of card. Oh, here it is. So let me cut this one down to five and a quarter. This is the one that has that beautiful metallic gold in the daisies. Isn't that pretty? I think this is what I'm going to do, just like that. I like it. What do you think? Okay, going back to more questions. Sharon, you have refilled your markers? Okay. Did you just open up the tip and pour, uh, put some drops in? Or did you soak the tip in some of the reinker? Sharon, that would be a good Facebook Live for you to show on your business page. You could also show it um, by taking photos of each step of how you refilled that. So if you've jumped on late, all you have to do when this ends is click on this post from today or if you do it later, an easy way to find all of the posts that have, um, and all the Facebook Lives that have been on this site is to go to videos and click that and all the different ones will come up. Okay. Remember when you're putting your flap on, be conscious of where you're putting your adhesive because you only, only need it on that left side. Okay. I'm going to do something a little bit different for the inside. Instead of having white on this white with the gold, I'm going to use a piece of terracotta tile. Let's see, I don't have any a scrap, so I'll have to cut a big from a big piece, the full sheet. So I need that to be the same size as this. So that is two and three quarters by four and a quarter. That's that piece I cut off from the original card base. See that? Okay, I'm going to put this here and I'm still going to add some white cardstock, but this is the piece that I need to match up with that front flap. I think I've got that well in place my adhesive on and I'm just going to fold that over to pick up that piece of cardstock for my center. Kind of looks like magic, doesn't it? <laughs> if Chrissy's watching, you'll have to show that to Violet. Okay, so now I want a piece of white that gets matted on there. And that, I probably, probably might need to cut another piece. Oh, this might just work. Yes, this is two and a half inches. So I need, let's see, two and a half by four inches there. And that can go right there in the center. Okay. Now, let's see, what do I want to put in front this time? That thank you is pretty big. I think I'll just do the same. Um, the same stamps I did, but maybe change up the colors a little bit. So I need this piece here to be, what did I do? I did two by three and a half, I believe. Is that correct? I should probably measure that before, where is it? Before I cut. Yes, two by three and a half. I'll bring that first card back in to show you after I finish this one. Two. My three and a half. Actually, I think I might want it even smaller. 
so that it shows up here. Oh, I know what I could do instead. Oh, Mary, here's a better idea. I'm going to do this instead. Just make a little flap, a little banner. Yes, that's what I want to do. And I'm going to stamp this in the terracotta tile, I believe. I think that would be nice. way. Okay, now here's where you could use the tailored tag punch to um, banner clip that end, but since I didn't pull that out, I'm going to use my paper snips if I can see where I put them. Well, for heaven's sakes, they should be right here. I guess I'll have to use my big ones, but this is not ideal. So what I do when I want to uh, make a banner cut is I clip up the center, and then I go from one side to that center, and then the other side to that center. And I'd say that looks pretty good. So I'm going to pop this up with a couple of dimensionals. It's amazing how my craft space works, uh, looks so neat when I start. And by the time I get done making a couple cards live, <laughs> uh, it's a mess. Oh, I like this. Okay, this I like, because then I can see more of these small daisies. I think I will add a ribbon here. This is the Old Olive ribbon from that combo pack, Terracotta and Old Olive. I'm looking at Sharon Shreve's comments here. You can pull out the tip, or for a quick fill, just put the tip of the marker into the reinker. Okay. So maybe dab out some, um, put a couple drops of reinker on a clear block and set the tip on into that little puddle of reinker and let it absorb. Thanks, Sharon, for that tip. I'll have to try that actually. And I need my glue dots to put the bow on. Remember, just one glue dot behind the knot of the bow is usually plenty to hold it in place. I think I'll add a few of those pretty um, gilded gems. And what I'm thinking about those gilded gems is maybe adding some to some of the florals, the gold florals here, like the center of the gold florals right there. And then I'm gonna do a large one. I'm gonna get it off over, over here, I think. Oh, how about here? This would be better. And I think I'm gonna do another small one up there or up here. I'm sure it's about right here. It's kind of off the page. All right, I like that. And then I can just stamp and adhere the inside of my card. And I will stamp the same. I'm using my, you can't see it off to the right here, but I'm using my um, Simply Chamois to clean that stamp and I'm going to stamp this in Old Olive, just like I did on the thanks for the front of the card. 
wonderful. I really, really like that font. Where's the ribbon? Yeah, I really like that font. Very pretty. It's sort of elegant and pretty, but it's not so fussy that it's hard to read. <laughs> Joan, you said you were you're happy I didn't cover that pretty paper. <laughs> Now, any of these products in the Ornate Garden Suite are available to customers and but both demonstrators and customers right now. This is part of Stampin' Up's um, early release promotion. It is a suite that will be in the new annual catalog in June, but they are just, um, you know, giving us sort of a teaser um, so if you've been looking for something new to purchase or you just um, want to be one of the first to get some of the new product, the Ornate Garden Suite is for you. These are my two cards. I hope that you will give, I seriously hope that you will, you know, I'm going to have to move this. This is kind of bugging me. I'm not liking it right where it is which means I'll have to put a glue dot on since I picked that up. And I'm going to put it in a different place. I just was not loving it. Maybe right there on this flower. Or maybe just about up here. The adhesive on the, for the, the glue dot was bigger than the adhesive on the, um, gilded gem that came off so you want to be sure and tuck that adhesive behind the gem so it's not icky okay but I hope you'll give this fun fold a try I hope you've enjoyed participating in my first make it with Mary session and um, I do hope that you love some or all of the products in the new sweet ornate garden and of course, any of these products could be used individually. This is gonna be great for coloring. I may be playing with that. And in the next several weeks, I will be putting together a couple of um, classes to go using these sweet products. So you can look forward to that and seeing lots of samples with this in the near future. Thank you all for joining me today. I hope to see you back here on Mondays for Make It With Mary at 11 a.m. I know it's not the most ideal time, but um, it's what I can work in now. And since I've been doing more Facebook Lives, I am trying to offer them at different times of day with people home and different schedule changes. But you can always access all of my live videos simply by going to the page or the group and clicking on videos and it will bring them all up for you to view. I will also be um, doing some edits and some photographs, and I will um, put all that into a blog post as well as include all of the dimensions um, for you in case you've missed them. Have a great week. I will be on my business page, Stamp and Scrap with Mary Nabe, tomorrow at 7 p.m. with another project for you. Have a great day.